this episode we are looking at the Lagoon 42. In our experience the 40 is a little bit too small and the 46 is a little bit too big. The 42 does seem to hit that sweet spot of being big enough to feel spacious to live on but small enough to also be manageable and a little bit more cost effective as well. Lagoons, as you probably know, they're a really, really popular brand of catamaran. They have a long-standing reputation for building good quality production catamarans and they're extremely popular. So let's go and see what the 42 has to offer. So here we find ourselves on the 2018 Lagoon 42. Our first category here is design and safety features. Helm position, we are looking at life raft position, we are looking at helm visibility and practicality. One thing that Lagoon have done is remove the grab rails and put a recessed uh, grab rail in. I'm not sure I like that. I like to be able to clip onto a grab rail, especially if I'm working the mast or the sails. It also is slightly difficult for Teresa to hold onto them because she's five foot two. So one thing we have noticed about this boat, it's 42 foot, but someone of slightly, shall we say, shorter stature has struggled with certain aspects of it. You can see that as you move back along the coach route, it becomes more difficult for Teresa to keep to maintain her grip on that grab rail. Again, in a big sea on a wet deck, I'm not sure I'd be overly happy with that. Now, one thing that we are assessing here is in the helm position and visibility. This cockpit has the optional hard dodger, the hard bimini, and I would say it is a very sturdy looking piece of kit. It is GRP, it has got two plexiglass windows in it so that you can see the sails, and it is supported by four fairly substantial struts. We're very happy with this. So this is quite a big helm position as well, isn't it? It's very similar to the um, Astrea, except the visibility is not nearly as good. I have to stand up on the little uh, ledge in order to see you can see both aft quarters, which you can't on the Fontaine Pajot. Ah, uh, okay. So you know, that's you get, true. You've got to reverse the boat as well as go, make it go yeah, forward. Yeah, that's true. But if I got my two tokens, then I can see. One thing we would say about this Lagoon 42 is that the helm seat is too low. At five foot two, Teresa cannot see over the nose of the boat. She would not be able to see forward on watch without standing up. Now that is gonna be really, really tiring on long passages. This could be simply addressed by just putting a gas strut or an adjustable seat. Again, it is a fixed seat at the moment, but I'm sure that Lagoon, who seem fairly flexible on this sort of thing, could put an adjustable seat there so that you could sit forward. Again, for long offshore passages, you do need a comfortable, easy to see helm. With all the lines running after self-tailing winches, clear instrument displays and everything at your fingertips. Steering and navigating this boat from this position is going to be super easy. In addition to that, the hard bimini, the hard dodger that you see here with the plexiglass windows is going to make sail trim an absolute breeze. Access to the cockpit from the helm position is super easy. However, we would want some sort of physical barrier, a bar between the helm and the side deck. There isn't one at the moment, but one may exist. We also talked about life raft position. Life raft position is absolutely in the transom, in the middle of the transom, so super easy to get to. Overall, we're really happy with the safety features of this boat. It is a solid seven out of 10, uh, and I hope you agree. I think if they could address that issue with the cockpit seat, we would be up there with a nine. So a good seven, well done Lagoon. So moving on to our next category, which is an important one, is build quality. Here we're assessing various aspects of the build, including, but not exclusively, the gooseneck, the quality of the joinery, fittings, the engine bay, steering mechanism, and the general overall robustness of this craft. So some technical information about the construction of the hull. It is a balsa cord hull, but solid GRP below the waterline. So strong but yet light and solid GRP below the waterline is a must. So the first thing I did notice and I always notice on Lagoons is the size and robustness of the davit system. It is really over spec and oversized so very happy with those. One message I do really want to put across here if you're looking to buy a boat whether it's new or used get into the engine bay have a good poke around with a torch. This Lagoon 40 they've changed the access for the engine hatches they now open the other way to give you additional protection in following seas 
This engine bay is huge. There is access on all sides to change filters, to change belts, and for any plant machinery that you may have down here. The hydraulic steering ram. Nice. It's a fair size hydraulic system as well. One thing I want you to check on all these boats is the steering mechanisms. Look at this, this is the tie rod for the rudders. It is a two inch, looks like an aluminum tube, good quality rose joints and the nuts are marked. That is just simply good attention to detail. The battery isolators are all held down here but there's one thing I want you to look at. Look at this, this is a conduit and those conduits that carry wires have self-expanding foam placed inside them. That stops the boat from flooding if you were to lose or breach the engine bay. That is good quality design. Moving to the interior, the joinery was of good quality. It is veneer faced plywood. Nothing felt flimsy and you know there's no movement in these fiddles. It all felt as if it would last the test of time which is really important. There are also really important little touches like using solid wood on cabinetry and the edges of cabinetry just so that it doesn't chip because veneer in these areas will peel away very very quickly. So happy with this. Another thing that's really important here and it's not just design it's also function. There are no sharp edges on this lagoon. Everything is curved steamed plywood. There are no hazards when you're moving around the boat in the seaway. It is really well thought out, well designed and if you propose to sail across oceans you do not want sharp corners sticking out of cabinetry. So check that when you're assessing a catamaran or a monohull for yourself. Overall I was happy with the build quality of the whole lagoon range. So build quality going to give that an 8 out of 10. Well done lagoon. So first let's have a look at the cockpit of the Lagoon 42. Now spacious cockpits are definitely something that Lagoon excels at and the 42 is no different. There's plenty of seating options. You'll have absolutely no problem finding somewhere for everyone to sit no matter how many people are around. My only complaint was that the cushions themselves, which uh, do not come standard, you have to pay for them, were really quite uncomfortable. They were thin and they were hard and the broker told me that this was so that they could be easily stacked and stored. Uh, but obviously that is only a concern for the charter market. Liverboards don't usually put their cush cushions away. Uh, it's something that you keep out all the time. So that would be something that uh, I personally would need to address in order to make this a comfortable liverboard. So now let's have a look at the inside of the Lagoon 42. This was an owner's version as most of the boat show models are. And as you can see at once, it is really bright and spacious and it's really quite amazing that this is only a 42 foot catamaran. There is loads of storage, so very practical for living on board. From an aesthetic point of view, obviously that's subjective. I personally like what Lagoon have done with the darker wood veneer. Of course, for a long time, the, uh, the color was a lot lighter which I personally do not prefer and I think that it's got quite a comfortable feel to it again that's personal preference but I actually like the the styling and the aesthetics of the lagoon range the guest hull is to port and as you can see the forward berth is very spacious indeed and the aft berth is just ginormous with a large island bed very very luxurious very bright and spacious and there's no doubt that any guests that you have on board will be very very comfortable indeed you access the owner's hull through these steps obviously and you can see that there is plenty of storage even under the floor and to the sides as well there's loads of drawer space cupboard space shelving etc so there'll be absolutely no problem fitting all of your things on this boat at all so throughout these boat reviews I think that you're going to hear me talk about ventilation a lot and that's because we've spent time in the tropics and it really is just so important to be cool on board. So to find a boat that has really good ventilation is super super important and I have to say that the lagoons do that really really well. So this is the master hull 
and um, it's very spacious it's really nice actually and one really great factor um, for me that's important to me is the number of opening hatches in the cabin because I'm a hot sleeper and when I am too hot I just cannot sleep and that obviously affects how much I'm enjoying myself so in the actual cabin itself we have um, one two three opening hatches as well as two like big uh, windows which obviously are there to let in light um, which have curtains you can close them off so that you know that it doesn't get too hot in here but I can imagine that in you know the evening or the first thing in the morning um, you can open up those curtains and just lie in bed have a cup of coffee and just like look out into your beautiful anchorage I mean how nice would that be in this kind of in-between space this kind of corridor between the cabin and the um, bathroom uh, you've got loads and loads of storage. I mean, my God, I don't think that I have enough stuff to put just in this hull alone. Um, along with like a desk um, and bookshelves and I guess, you know, you could call this like a bit of a workstation, a storage area. Um, it's probably kind of multi-purpose. You could, you could turn this into whatever suited you personally. And now we go into the owner's shower room probably too large and glamorous to be called a heads it's got a big separate shower and loads of storage the only thing about the 42 that i don't like as much as the 40 and the 46 is that they haven't changed or they haven't upgraded updated the um like the bench tops um so they're not using corian they're just using i don't know like a plastic it's a really lovely shower room lots of light we've got this huge panel um this window behind me so that lets in a lot of natural light and also you've got the opening hat up above so that you still have ventilation in here. The windows in the lagoon are really beautiful actually and they provide a real panoramic view of everything which is not just nice for being at anchor. It's also nice when you're underway and perhaps the weather's not so good and so you're inside you can see everything around you as you're sailing along. The galley in the Lagoon 42 is not as big as I think maybe a lot of liverboards would like but it's perfectly practical. I'm comparing it to the galley on our 38 foot monohull and to me it doesn't seem significantly bigger, definitely not significantly more ben bench space. So the saloon is very, very spacious indeed. Nick and I can both sit comfortably at the settee, which is very important to us. Just out of shot here, there is another ottoman, which you can obviously put your feet up on or provide additional seating. So there's plenty of options. The large windows afford a beautiful panoramic view of whatever anchorage you're in. And you can see in this shot that you have two large-ish opening hatches. And I think that this would be perfectly sufficient for ventilation purposes. I've seen better ventilation in the saloons, but I've also seen far worse. So the shape of the lagoon may not be to everyone's taste. However, what the vertical windows do afford is really great panoramic views, but not at the cost of getting a lot of direct sunlight into the saloon. And trust me when I say that direct sunlight does cause the boat to heat up quite significantly. So the fact that the windows are vertical would reduce that quite significantly. And I think the saloon would remain really nice and cool, especially with those opening hatches, even on sunny, hot days. So what are we gonna score the interior design? This is a big category. It encompasses a lot of things from headroom to quality of materials. This is a production cat, it is built to a price point and therefore the quality is not ever going to be as high as some of the other boats that we're going to look at in this series. However, taking that into account, I personally would give this a solid 6 out of 10. The next category I want to talk to you about is performance. It is going to be no surprise if I tell you that Lagoon do not make performance catamarans. But let's run through some statistics because it's really important here. The Lagoon 42 is probably its closest competitors are the Fontaine Pajot 42 and then the Katana Bali 4.3. They're all about the same size. The Lagoon comes in at 12.8 metres, the FP at 12.5 metres and the Bali at 13 metres. The beam on the Lagoon is 7.7 .7 metres. That is much wider than both the Fontaine Pajot and the Bali. The draft is the same in all of them 1.25 meters they are shoal drafted they have stub keels and sail drives so there is no protection to the propeller there uh, so drying out you'd have to be a little bit careful there as for sail area the lagoon has a 55 square meter mainsail and a 35 square meter 
Genoa, that is significantly smaller than both the main cell and the Genoa on the Fontaine Pajot. Um, in fact, even the Bali has a slightly larger Genoa. And the last category we're looking at here is the lightweight displacement. The Lagoon 42 comes in at a whopping 12.1 tonnes. Compare that to the Fontaine Pajot 42 at 11.5 tonnes and the Bali 4.3 at 11.3 tonnes. So she is a heavy boat. Let's take a quick look at the polar diagram. These are theoretical speeds for an unladen boat and lagoons say that you can probably look to get around 12 to 12 and a half knots of speed in optimal conditions and obviously as you can also see pointing ability is not particularly good either. That being said, in trade wind conditions when you've got 20-25 knots of tree wind from behind, these boats probably will give you 7 to 8 knots, so that's really not too shabby. However, a lagoon is never going to be classed as a performance catamaran, and for that reason we're going to give it a modest 4 out of 10 purely for performance. So our final category is value for money. The Lagoon 42 comes in at a basic price of 327,000 euros. That is 280,000 British pounds and 365,000 US dollars. We totted up the extras we would need to add and it is quite extensive to get a boat that we want to a high level of blue water cruising standard. And our final price in euros was 477 thousand euros that's four hundred and ten thousand pounds and five hundred and thirty thousand us dollars bear in mind this does not include local taxes they represent good value for money new and they hold their value in the used boat market so we're going to give this a solid five out of ten we will of course provide full links to the complete price list down below so look in the description to find out where you can access the full prices for the lagoon 42 wrap up our thoughts on the Lagoon 42 uh, just to summarize everything that we felt about the boat so why don't you start I think I can probably put it into a sentence say it's a very solidly well-built boat I would have full confidence in sailing that boat across oceans yes I completely agree and I think that it is obviously a production catamaran you have to bear that in mind it's built to a price point however I think that the overall quality was very good better than I actually expected going in and the design and the layout as well I think Lagoon get top marks for that it's a very comfortable boat to live on yeah um, I think as with most production boats the owners take them and modify them a little bit and I think with some minor tweaks this boat you know it's 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 good I, I was happy with it so that's our review of the Lagoon 42 uh, a couple of things firstly if you have a Lagoon 42 or if from this video you are able to score this yourself just check on the links down below and it will show you how you can score it and the idea is that we form like a collection of scores and then we'll average them up over the coming months that's the first thing second thing is that over the coming weeks we will review far more catamarans we have seen uh, we've eight or nine at the moment and there's still more to see that weren't actually presented at Grand Mott so we will go through and do comparative reviews of all the ones we saw and again um, if you look below you'll see what's coming next and what's to be seen in future episodes so thank you so much for watching we'll be back with another search of the perfect catamaran very soon so goodbye <laughs>